Hello, everybody. I'm going to begin. Okay, there y'all go. There go everybody. I'm going to begin and I'm going to post this video. Well, upload this video to my YouTube channel. So I'm going to stay focused, first of all, on the things that I'm saying. Before I begin, though, I want to say two things. One is if you're interested, I will mention this throughout the video. If you're interested this Saturday, I'm going to be a guest. Um, with go get her goddess group i need to tag her let me see if she available right quick let me see if i can get her up in here right quick before one second anyway i'm gonna be a guest and we're gonna be talking about chakra uh pools of energy how to clear or heal your chakra what chakra pools of energy are if you're interested in that the uh, Cash App link is in my bio. It's 5555 for a two-hour class on this Saturday. That'll be 8 a.m. if you're out here in Arizona. But if you're Central Time, that'll be 9 a.m. And so they have three other guests that's going to be there. I'm going to be um, the concluder, so to speak, and wrapping up talking about or concluding on all chakra pools of energy and how it correlates for the crown chakra uh, expansion to kundalini energy how to heal lower chakras so that you can rise to higher self or higher consciousness so if you're interested in that I'll, I'll tag that a little bit later but I want to get to this here my like I said my cash app is in my bio it's $55.55 cent two hour class Saturday and we're gonna be doing it on Google it's gonna be a Google live so <clears throat> Google Meets is the name of it. So here we go. First of all, I'm talking about chakra pools of energy today. I'm talking about crystals here. I'm going to talk about chakras briefly. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of it because I'm going to save that for the class. Mostly, I'm going to be talking about my favorite crystals today and how they helped me on my journey and why I chose these crystals. But I want to let you know before I even start talking about crystals that you are always going to be the most powerful crystal that you will ever know own your mind inside of your brain you have crystals that you should be able to use to draw things to you you have gold inside of you you have crystals inside of you you have crystals fluid inside of you that your land that is flowing with milk and honey when you tap into your higher self and become your Christ conscious one, when you decide to save yourself. Before I begin, I also need to let you know that I come from religion. And then coming from religion and going to spirituality and realizing that you your savior and that you are God and really understanding that the kingdom of God lives inside of you. You might think some of these things that I'm going to say is going to be blasphemy for what you were taught in your limited box, your program your old way of thinking from what religion taught you. But we're tapping out of religion into the boundless universe. We're getting outside of your limited box in the way that you saw life. And we're going to program your mind or reprogram your mind to be boundless now. And sometimes in your journey, you be scared of that because people tell you, you know, you're working for the devil now. People will tell you, okay, now since you just left church, you're a backslider now. Now, since you're doing these things, maybe you a witch, you know, you a hoodoo worker, right? Because you, you, you ain't doing what you used to do. Behold, all things that you did in the past are gone and you, your, your newness awake you. So I'm going to present this here to you in front of you. And if you can't see this on the um, screen, it is what I bought in my journey. You don't have to bring this here with you and your journey, but I'm letting you know. That I bought this here, a little symbol with me from religion to spirituality. And it is a little um, uh, keepsake, a picture of what they would call in religion, the angel Michael. Because, you know, when I was in religion, I used to pray to the angels and to the so-called Jesus, to all these things outside me. And when doing that, I was giving my energy to these things. And when you give energy to these things, they go for you. And you kind of develop a relationship with this here. You you conjure up energy. And now these things you believe in, right? You kind of have faith in, right? So when I began to go into my spiritual walk, I bought this here with me, symbolizing Michael. After my religious prayer, I used to say, 
you know, by the blood of Jesus, things like that. And then I would say, I send you angels, Michael. I send the angels, Michael, Gabriel, and St. Clair with their swords dipped in the blood to cut us under any spirit that is contrary to the word of the will of God for my life, right? And being that I had that same prayer for so many years, I had conjured up so much energy toward this Michael uh, idea, Gabriel idea, St. Clair idea. And so when I was dealing with crystals, now that Michael that I often believed in then, I'd already conjured up the energy. So I felt safe knowing that Michael, when I dealt with my crystals, was protecting me. Like, right? And so maybe that'll help you. You don't have to do that because I did that. I'm just saying that'll help you with your own thoughts. Because really, you're just battling your own thoughts and your own old beliefs of what the pastor them said and what religion told you that was like the Antichrist was something that you shouldn't do or shouldn't practice. And so I was taking one for the team because I felt like to the core of me that there was something outside of religion that I needed to explore, something far greater and far deeper that, that I wanted to ask questions about and I had got tired of getting bopped upside my head just because I asked why. Because when I begin to ask why, why brought me down to a boundless portals that allowed me to get to know myself. And so I was taking one for the team and I was like, okay, well, I'm going down this rabbit hole and I'm going to find out what these crystals could really do. And I'm going to find out my power too. So that's something you can take a charm, a tool with you if you're scared in the beginning. But realize when you begin to open up your mind, your first mind's eye, your third eye, your first eye, your consciousness, subconscious mind, whatever you call it, your Akashic record, your Lamb Book of Life, whatever you call it, when you begin to open it up, it's nothing to be afraid of because whatever's going to come out of there is what you put in there. All your fears of the so-called devil with the fig pitchfork, you put that in there. All the boogeyman's, you put that in there. All the things that you allow people to tell you about going to hell, you put that in there because you believed in that. You believed in that without knowing those things were true. And so if you believed in that, you made yourself scared, God. And so now you got to clean up the closets in, you know, the, the skeletons in your own closet and get to the mental clarity that you long for, the one that you've been seeking for, the expansion that you came here for to expand and evolve back to yourself. Okay? Yes, I found your life. Hey, 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 how you doing, Ashley? Okay, I want to be returned to Christu when I leave this flesh. Uh, yeah, I could believe that. So, here we go. In my journey, when I first started off, because I came from religion, I really didn't focus on many of the lower chakra crystals. So, I'm not really going to talk about them. Because I knew I had trauma in religion. I knew I had little girl issues. I knew I had daddy issues. But what stayed in my mind was the fact, the biblical text when it said, I am from above, ye are from below. And so that often stuck with that and how my mind works. I, I don't think of those things and put them in one aspect. I think of them as physically and spiritually and then I apply it to my right now reality. So with that biblical, that parable, I thought of, okay, maybe that scripture is saying <laughs> that my higher chakra pools of energy are going to be more powerful than my lower chakra pools of energy. And I concluded that to be true when I did research to find out about the heart. The heart being the most powerful form of energy, have an electromagnetic field of energy that will draw things to you based upon how you feel. This is what the law of attraction is trying to teach you, what the law of assumption is trying to teach you, how you feel really matters. So I wanted to open up my heart first. Hey, Miss B and so I'm at work, you know, a few minutes, so I dropped in, popped in. Thank you. I appreciate you. So I wanted to start with my heart first. But even though I wanted to start with my heart first, I was drawn to my first crystal while in New Orleans walking down Canal Street. They had this man. He was selling all kind of crystals on his table. I was actually on a date. And he had this big old purple uh, ornament on him, hanging from him. And I was actually on the other corner. And But the energy from him was pulsating so much, I asked my date. Could we go see what's on that man's table? We walked over there. And 
he was telling me everything about on the table and I was just looking at him and his necklace. I was like, yeah, that's all nice and dandy, but I want that. That thing he's wearing, what is that? And that, what he was wearing, was my first crystal. And that is called Amethyst. Amethyst crystal was the first of my a collection because it drew me to it. And when I first seen it, I went back. This is just how my, my mind works. I went back to the biblical text where it says that you are a royal priesthood. And I said to him, I said, I want that one. Is that one for sale? How much do you want for it? Could I buy it from you? He laughed at me. He said, oh, no, this one not for sale. But they have a, a store around the corner, which would happen to become my favorite store called Earth Odyssey. If you're in New Orleans, Louisiana, the name of the store is this is one of the little stickers from that store called Earth Odyssey. The address is 306 Charters, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70130. Earth Odyssey became one of my favorite stores. I don't live in New Orleans no more. So anyway, so Amethyst. And the reason why I liked Amethyst is because it drew me to it. It was that powerful. I bought some earrings that was in, um, well, actually my date bought this for me. I bought a necklace. Well, he bought a necklace for me. He bought me some earrings and he bought me this one here. This one here is the one he bought me that night on my date. And I went home that night and I laid my head on my pillow. The lady that sold the amethyst to me, she told me to just put it underneath my pillow and give it good intentions. That was the best sleep of my life. I slept so good that night that I went to um, the Earth Odyssey store the next day and I brought everybody in my house with me to go pick out them a piece of amethyst because I wanted everybody to experience a good night of sleep. I also bought me another amethyst. And if you were on my yesterday's live when I was talking about bring, bringing crystals to that chaotic job that was, I was at when I was on low frequency, this was the crystal that I would bring to work. Because I was on low frequency, I had a counterpart that was on low frequency. I was trying to get out of that job, and I was using mentalism. I was using the law of assumption. I was doing everything to increase my frequency to get up out of there, and I started with this here, amethyst. And on my job, I had my amethyst on my desk inside of this here crystal. Nobody could see it. I knew it was there, but every time... I felt my energy fluctuating, so to speak. I ran to my amethyst and I put it in my hand. When I went, when I wasn't feeling work for that particular day, I had my amethyst with me. And for me, rep, amethyst represents divine wisdom. It represents uh, universal consciousness and enlightenment, the royal priesthood. And remember when I was talking about the 144,000, how we have this frequency that correlates with the chakra pools of energy. When we got to the higher chakras, remember that the crown chakra was the multiplier of all the lower chakras but because it multiplied the lower chakras by a thousand, making not only it 144, but it became, when multiplied by a thousand, you became the 144,000 frequency kundalini being in physical form transforming into consciousness, right? So I wanted that frequency to be amongst me. I had it at home underneath my pillow. I had it on my job when I was, you know, at work in this crystal right here. I had one in my car. I wanted it around me all the time. Because see, you got to use these crystals and these herbs and these things outside of you, God, when you're at your lower self and you done forgot yourself when you're on a journey to remember yourself. And then when you remember yourself and you evolve to your higher self, you don't need that no more. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I thought like a child. I behaved like a child. But when I became, I put away those childish things. When your becoming state happened, you, you're going to realize that that you're not going to be carrying these kind of things with you the more you're going to realize that you know that you're the most powerful crystal that you will ever own. You're going to realize that you could just jump into this thing. <laughs> like sometimes I actually right now on my life, I am having a conversation with myself. That's why I don't really be looking at myself right there because I'm already talking to myself, remembering this information from my higher self, regurgitating this information and telling it to myself. So I don't entertain the, the distractions until I finish 
talking to myself. You could jump into knowing what your Akashic records is what I'm saying. Knowing things from infinite intelligence is what I'm saying. Knowing yourself because you are all that exists, right? And so that was my first baby, Amethyst. And so, of course, I wanted begin. I begin to learn or yearn to want to know more information about myself. And so then it brought me down a rabbit hole of wanting to get other crystals, right? Because once you open up this portal, this consciousness, <laughs> there's so many rabbit holes, and all of them run real, real deep. So for the point in time, I got down. I went down the rabbit hole of consciousness as it pertained to me and my relationship with crystals. So amethyst felt good to me, but I knew that I had thyroid issues. I, at that point, didn't express myself really well. And instead of actually going to the, to the throat chakra crystals, which are so beautiful, you know, for the throat chakra crystals, they have all kind of um, crystals that will help you with that one. But I understood, back to what I understood, that the crown chakra was the multiplier and that the heart chakra had an electromagnetic field of energy around it. So I, I understood that Amethyst drew me, to, drew me to it on that corner. And so I wanted one that correlated with my heart. Because I wanted my heart to be open. Because I also understood that if my heart chakra was open, then it had the power to heal my other chakra pools of energy, igniting my electric body. And so I studied and researched and I fell in love with rose quartz for the heart. I don't have the rose quartz for my heart in front of me. I carried it with me for years, but I ended up giving it to a cancer patient because I was led to do so. But rose quartz crystal, I carried it from, with me in my bra, actually. That might be too TMI for some of you, but I wanted it as close to my heart as possible so it would actually be in my bra. It was really, really smooth. It was a smooth, smaller version of this one here, and it was pink, correlating with my heart chakra, allowing me to open up my heart. And in opening up my heart, I was opening up an electric magnetic field of energy that could have went up and down and activated my kundalini energy because it was powerful enough, or it is powerful enough to open up all other chakra pools of energy. So rose quartz crystal is a heart crystal that I would encourage you to buy and it, it, it taught me unconditional love at the same time simultaneously I was paying attention paying attention to the things that I loved yeah yeah I was finding things to love even if that meant a little baby even if that meant a little bird even if that meant a beautiful house that I saw whatever it was at that appointed time I was finding love I was finding something to fall in love with even if it was like a, a handicapped person even if it was a handsome man a, 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 a stranger a friend from from elementary school whatever it was I was finding something to make my heart experience love finding a situation to experience unconditional love with because what I was doing was transforming my energy and I was allowing my love to heal me because I remember in the biblical text that it said, love yours all. These were some of the things I had already believed. So, so it became a law in my subconscious mind, a law enough for me to get to know this. So you graduate from the place in life where you just believe in things. You start to get to know. Like I just knew that I was on to something with these. So I didn't play, I didn't play around with the red root chakra um, crystal. Because I felt like love was going to heal my root. And so what I did in my physical reality, since I was in, in body in the state of love, I forgave those that may have had my root chakra out of balance like my father. And called him on the phone and said that, Hey, hey, I just want you to listen. It would have been nice had you been there for my marriage, for my two graduations, this and that and the third. But you know what? I just want you to know that I just simply love you simply because you are my father. Practicing unconditional love because what I was saying is, you know, I'm, I'm going through sickness and disease in here. I'm feeling disharmony within here. All I'm trying to do is balance in here. And I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let no thing separate me from the love, the love of God.
because I am love. And so amethyst would be my first crystal that drew me. The second crystal that, that, that got my attention was the rose quartz. Like I said, it's a pink one. But then I wanted to learn how to just let things go and clear energy, clearing energy. And so the crystals that I use for um, clearing energy was just clear, just like I'm saying, clear quartz. So if you find yourself maybe around a job where you even like for in the beginning stages of me tap, stepping into my passion, you know, I'm always I used to always, well, still do, always be around maybe sick people, you know, with people that have AIDS and cancer and they're depressed or they're having trauma and they're experiencing some type of dis-ease and disharmony. I do consultations. I do mentorship. I do all this. So the beginning of my journey, that used to weigh on me. It used to weigh on me so much that after I did it, I would just be passed out. You know, like I couldn't, in the beginning, I used to not be able to do lives back to back. I've been going back to back now. But in the past, I couldn't do that because the energy was like I was picking that up and I didn't know how to clear it. I didn't know how to block it. I didn't know how to recharge. So it was like it was draining. It felt so draining for me. So the one that I chose for that is called Clear Quartz. Clear Quartz clears negative energy. So if you find yourself maybe working at a hospital, maybe a, con a consultant doing therapy, or maybe it's just chaotic sometimes at work. You know, so when we go into the store, when we're going to work, when we walk into somebody else's house, and, and when, we, when we're going to the mall, when we're going to clubs, we're... We are, imagine, if you will, two little mini hurricanes. That's you standing next to another person. Your aura pulsates just like that. It's like you have this aura or frequency because you're just energy, frequency, and vibration. So when you come into 20 feet um, radius of somebody else, your little hurricane with all of your subconscious thinking and your 13.5 billion years of information is is like energy just looping around and so somebody stand next to you and like like now y'all like make, making a, a union so to speak this is why you can't stand people to be around you at sometimes when you know you feel their chaos and so sometimes you need you need people say i need to i need to protect my peace they'll say this is what's really going on so in an effort to clear that and not bring that home to your loved ones not be drained. This is a crystal for that clear quartz crystal. That'll help you a lot in your journey. So the next one I want to talk about is, um, like I said, I didn't really fool with the low, the lower ones. But there are some beautiful lower ones and you can work on lower ones. But the biggest thing for you to work on lower ones is opening up that heart chakra. The biggest thing for you to open up the um the lower chakras that may be stagnating your growth is asking yourself why. Why do I act like this? Why do I think like this? Forgiving the little girl and letting the little girl know or the little boy inside of you know that it feels protected or it is protected that you have them now, that you love them now. Asking yourself how you feel. Telling yourself, okay, we, we want to do such and such today and go do it. Asking yourself, hey, do you want to have fun today? What do you feel like doing and carrying out and doing it? Because how you feel matters. And really all that's doing is you falling in love. You opening up your heart to yourself. And that love is healing yourself. It's healing you at a cellular level. Even when you begin to change your diet, you're healing yourself. Because you're, you're giving yourself now something new. Something that you in your mind know that is like nourishment to my soul and I deserve this thing here. So I'm going to treat myself really, really good. I'm going to fall in love with me at a cellular level. This here whole act of having a new lifestyle is love. It's you loving on yourself. So for me, I wanted my heart and my mind to be open. I've always was really inquisitive, always used the right side of my brain, always thought spiritually about everything. But I had in the back of my mind a yearning since I came from religion to find out what the heck I was here for in my physical reality because I knew I had a calling on my life and I knew when I was in church I would always get prophesied about, about being who I am now. And that scared me. That scared me, being 12 years old and younger, 
having lucid dreams, sleep paralysis. Yeah, that was scary. Hearing voices call me and leave me sleepwalking. That was scary to me. And that's really part of the reason why I left religion because I was afraid of my own power, of my own self. And I said, no, I'm not going to end up being no evangelist, no pastor. I don't want to tell these people nothing. And so in my mind, in the spiritual realm, I closed my expression. I halted my own growth. I blocked my own throat chakra and it showed up as dis-ease and disharmony. So here I am trying to open up my heart and mind and get this energy flowing again in the spiritual realm because I don't want to experience this ease and disharmony anymore. So I had it, I ended up opening up my heart that way. And so healing was coming to my body as I forgave my, my daddy and and I began to love and find love automatically. I opened up my mouth while I was finding this love. Everything that I found love in, I began to express my love for it. And so when you guard it in this way, when your heart has been closed for so long, I'm going to look at the comments a little bit later when I finish saying what I'm saying. But when you've been guarded for so long, you have this, you operating now and you're masculine. And it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man. It doesn't matter if you're a woman and a man or a man because the totality of who you are is both male and female principles. There must be two sides. So for me being in the physical form in this particular lifetime, I was operating from masculine energy because <laughs> I was blocking my heart. I was guarding my heart. And that takes that takes strength, that takes power, that takes masculine energy. So how do you heal from guarding your heart with masculine energy when you stop your heart from loving and expressing yourself? Well, you have to tap into this, to the physical, I mean, sorry, to the feminine side of you. <laughs> yeah, you got to go on the other end of the spectrum when you exude in masculine energy, guarding and protecting. You got to learn how to release that and tap into your feelings. Get a little softer. Start, start expressing yourself. So in finding the things that I loved, I couldn't find the things that I love and be masculine about it and be like, yeah, yeah, that's cool and all. That's that's nice and all. And I like that and all. No, no, no. You got to find it. You got to fall in love. You got to milk it. You got to get into your feminine and say, oh, yeah, that feels so beautiful. I really like that. That's like a special treat. It gives me a warm and fuzzy feeling. I feel this. I'm, I'm excited about this. This makes me happy. By expressing that, because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So I was tapping into my feminine side of myself and expressing myself how I felt. Anytime somebody would tell me or ask me what I was doing out of my heart, I was speaking and telling them how I was feeling. Oh, I feel real comfortable today. Today was a beautiful day, even though it stormed. I felt like I was in the perfect storm. You know, there's there's like a calm before the storm. But for me, it feels like a calm before the storm and a calm after the storm. It, it smells so beautiful out here after the storm. It was storming today. That's why I'm mentioning the storm. And so when, when the storm be over, the smell of it is like, it's like the freshest rain here in Arizona, everything just smells so fresh, like the soil, it, it, it smells so rich, and it, it makes you just want to just taste it, and just, just, <laughs> just go outside barefooted in it, and, and just, and just surrender, and just get wet, and just be like a child, and play in the rain, I feel like a child here, I'm so happy, and so thankful that I move here, you know, expressing myself like that there, that what I just did was an example of me opening up my heart. Opening up my heart from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. We talk about the higher chakra pools of energy here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That can heal the whole body. And so I talked about the amethyst, first love, rose course, which I gave to somebody else, was my second love. The third one was me clearing energy, my clear course crystal. And then I fell in love with my obsidian. <laughs> And the reason why I moved from, from, from those to my blacks is because I, you know, look, I'm a little black lady in physical reality. I wanted to see 
see what that black was all about. When I saw it, as I was researching, I saw it and I just felt like, <laughs> you know, it's just because I come from religion, I felt like, you know, oh, it must be a little powerful, it must be a little naughty, you know, I, it, it made me feel kind of witchy, you know, and I was like, ooh, you know, the church people don't want me to go over there, but I'm going to go over there anyway, I'm going to take one for the team because I want to get to know myself, and to get to know myself is to get to know God, you know, church people always talk about the so-called devil, you know, the devil made me do it, you're going to go to hell, you're going to this and that and the third, but I was on a point in my journey where I wanted to study, the biblical text says study and show yourself approved by rightly dividing the word of truth so i wanted to divide that thing and see what that thing was all about for me i wanted to know instead of believe because church taught me to believe but i wanted to know so then i evolved and i began to learn about obsidian and so obsidian really helps me with protection it, it, it reminded when i learned about it, it reminded me of, of the Michael little charm that I had because in my mind from religion, Michael was protecting me while I was on this journey, learning about crystals and learning about myself. And so obsidian is one that, that I, I, I begin to work with this one when I was trying like to conjure up to come to me or to get away from me. And I felt like, I feel like, I know like obsidian helps me in that area but it also if and as i was reading it it's almost like a crystal ball and if you would stare at it, it would really lord me to get one is because it's used for scrining and if you would stare at it you could see in other realms if you have the ability to focus and a control imagination it's almost like you you are that so-called witch seeing and reading your own future and not only can you see it, but you can manipulate it and you can make it what you want it to be. And if it's scary, you can make it peaceful. See, it was teaching me how to be God in physical form. <laughs> a manifester manifesting, a creator creating, just through looking through the ball. I use the ball as my object of attention, but I have always been the greatest crystal that I would ever own. It was always me, not the crystal. It was always me. But obsidian really, really helped me on my journey. And obsidian is like a volcano type glass. It's, it's, it's heavy and weighted. And it, 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 it helps you with your psychedelic type um, powers, your clairvoyancy. It protects you. That, that's what it did for me. That's what it was known for for me. It helps me with my lucid dreamings, dreaming and my ability to read and see clear. I'm not talking about seeing in the physical. I'm talking about seeing spiritually through people because I always knew I had a gift. And so I was trying to kind of like fine tune my gift with these particular crystals. And that's what I did. So I had obsidian. I fell in love with obsidian. I kept obsidian for for years and I have this little mount that I keep it to this day next to my favorite crystals in my room. Now I would when I would meditate with this here I would have it in my in my hand and the first time I used it and had it in my hand I want to share that with you just like the amethyst it knocked me out. I was meditating. I was I, I in that time I would look at a certain spot on the wall and looking at that certain spot on the wall, I would be looping a scene that I wanted to be drawn to me via my subconscious mind. And as I was trying to loop the scene, <laughs> as I was trying to loop the scene, I just, I just fell out. I just passed out pretty much because it was so powerful and holding it in my hand, it picked up on the frequency that I was emitting and it just knocked me out. It knocks me out. This is how powerful this one here was for me. It helps. It also helps with deep healing in your body and, and like your shadow work and things like that. So really what I'm saying is this is part of the reason why I didn't have to go to the reds for root chakra. I didn't have to go to the orange for the sacral chakra. I didn't have to necessarily go to the yellows for my solar plex because this thing or these higher things was healing those lower things is what I'm saying. It helps me cross over being more confident about being a divine or 
what I would say chosen one being prophetic, you know, my calling, right? And so during this time, I knew that I was powerful because at this point in my time, in my journey, I was already writing in my book. I was writing the things that I want. And if I would open up this book, you, I could read some things in, in this book that now are here. You know, like I wrote about this move here in Arizona. I wrote about this house here. I wrote details in this book about what's happening now i wrote my future i wrote it down and i would suggest if you have crystals that you have you a book where you write your desires that you are drawing to you in the physical reality and so you could be your author and you could be your own finisher and so i would write different things in this particular book and i've been having this book since um june i put the date at the bottom down here june 25th 2021 and there's this black man on tiktok he had this little song so and i love i fell in love i actually did a duet with him i fell in love with this little song and i wrote it on in my book on the first page because i felt like this song this is the words for his song i felt like the song was so powerful and i wanted it to be on my first page it reads everything that i need i already have everything that i have is all that i need anything i desire i will receive because my reality is created by me I'm successful, I'm peaceful, I'm free, I'm wise, I'm potential energy, and like a phoenix, I shall rise. I am healthy, I am wealthy, I am power, I am talent, I am mind, I am spirit, I am body, I am balanced. I am enlightened, I am fearless, I am outside the realm of time, I am a part of the all, and I am one with the divine. So that was the, excuse me, I'm sorry about that. So that was the, um, the first page of my book. And everything else in my book is me manifesting my move out here to Arizona, you know, and, and the experiences that I was having with my crystals and stuff and, and, and just writing out how I felt because I was still trying to, I was still at this point in my journey, working on my feelings, working on making sure my heart chakra was wide open. And, and in my book, you could see I'm, I'm writing, I feel joy, I feel worthy, I feel love, I feel light. Yeah, and so I was just writing everything about how I feel, tapping into my feminine side by expressing how I felt from my heart, right? This is part of my healing journey. I, he who has an ear, let him hear. So I had took a trip, and if you scroll through my TikTok, you know this to be true. I took a trip out here to Arizona, and I fell in love with the energy, the frequency here. And so this is not a crystal that you would you would own. But when I hit ground out here, I said to myself out there, um, out here, unbeknownst to me, Wow, this place feels like home. This feels like a place that I will retire at. I was on a retreat in Sedona, Arizona. And so I grabbed this while I was here. And this is actually the Red Rock from Arizona. And I bought this. I live in Arizona now. But I bought this here back home with me as a piece of this soil out here. As a piece because I was working my magic. It's a piece of the soil out here because I knew and I was saying to myself, I shall return. This is my home. And I spoke out loud that this is a place where I will retire at. I'm coming back. So I went home. Hurricane Ida came and it was like a bridge of incidents that was created for me to sell that. Well, to move out here to, to rebuild is what I'm saying. That home out there and to, you know, to, to get a new construction here, home here. <laughs> And so this is not a crystal, but I took some soil from here and I'm showing you why I took it because I want to feel, I wanted to feel it. I wanted to smell it. I used this with my law of assumption and creating my reality. I wanted to feel it. I wanted to smell it. I wanted to be part of it. So I carried this with me and I will meditate with this here rock. And I would say, oh, this feels like home. And I would actually put this rock on my feet, you know, as if I was going outside barefooted in my backyard or in my front yard. And I was like, oh, this is how my, my front yard and my backyard is going to feel. I'm outside now, I would pretend. I would get my hands really, really dirty with this particular rock because all of this is just conjuring up energy. Get it dirty with this particular rock and I feel like I'm home. You know, I feel like I'm part of this here energetic frequency. 
needless to say, I live here now, and but I still keep this rock. This was my first baby. The next one that I use is called New Mike. The guy, I don't know this guy's name who I got this here little poem from, but I'm sure y'all heard this popular poem that I just here read to y'all. This particular guy, one day, when I did that duet with him, I saw this via the TikTok on him. And as soon as I saw it, it's like my focus, my ability to focus went straight on what he was wearing. I liked his little poem, his little song that he created, but he was wearing this. And I and I and I went on a hunt. Just I didn't I didn't know the name of it, but I know it, that it had a different frequency from my my obsidian. And I said, wait a minute, I, I need to know which one that is. I know I knew it was not my my shungai. I knew that one because I had already had that black one because I like to get all the black one because I know the black is really, really powerful and it really, really is protective and it really, really is healing. So I wanted all of the blacks. And so I went in that video with him with the poem had got really, really popular. So I went in his comments and I was scrolling. I was like, sure, let some like minded energy asked him what that is that he have on his neck. And I found it in the comment and it is called New Mike because he answered that person. It was called New Mike. And so I went to go and, and <laughs> whoo, I was to go on a hunt. I did a video on this particular one. This is called New Mike. And the first day that I got New Mike, and research, I didn't research at first, I researched later. I just trust that energetically I was being led to it like I was being led to my amethyst and I just trust myself and just ordered myself and I spent, I ordered it for myself and I spent a lot of money on this here, new might. And I just wanted to see how it was going to make me feel without reading what they say, you know, in, you know, online and all that. I wanted to see, I wanted to experience me through this here thing because it's me anyway. Let me experience myself. Don't tell me what I'm going to feel like. Let me feel me. And as soon as, as soon as I got it, it was like my mind, my mind all that day. It was like my mind was saying, but why, 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 why are you thinking like that? But why? Why, why? It was like taking me back, just taking me back. It was like clearing old thoughts that I thought that I had worked on and cleared in my mental, in my mind. And, and it was just like purging me. <laughs> it was purging me so much. And then, then my hand just wanted to write in my book, my book that I just shared with you even more. It began to write. I began to write and write and write. I'm love. I'm beautiful. I'm perfect. I'm this I'm that. I was writing so many I am affirmations. And so after I did that and I had this powerful dream, this vivid dream, and then I went to sleep and I slept really, really good. And I compared it to my amethyst and between my amethyst, my obsidian, and my new mic, they all, those three, those three, for some reason, was the most powerful ones to me. They knocked me out, put me to bed, bed, I'm talking about. And didn't go into bed. I didn't go to a regular sleep. I had these popping colored dreams. I was like in other realms and worlds. And I came back supercharged healed on a deeper energetic level. Like I had made little, many ascension points, like, right? So the next day I decided to do some research and then I researched on it that it was like a three billion year old stone and the only the nobles carried it. And, and that the, and then when I saw that, I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. I, I needed this here. Only the gods had one. Okay. That sounds about right. I am a God. And, and so it said those locals, the locals that had one in my research, they were beheaded if they were found with one and they were found not worthy, right? Because it opened up psychedelic powers. It helped you with your manifestation process. And being that it was here so, so long, you know, or discovered so long ago, it kind of cleared your energy and kind of like repurged you back to your, your God self when you were so, you know, when you was the darkness, so to speak, on the deep. When you was just clear, pure consciousness. And I was like, oh, that makes a whole lot of sense. Because as soon as I got it, the thing that I did the most was constantly ask myself, why? Why am I thinking like this? Why am I acting like this? Why am I not happy? Why, 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 why? And it was purging me and allowing me to just be easy with myself. I fell in love with New Might. N-U-U-M-I-T-E. New Might. 
So these are my stones or my crystals and these are my favorites. But I want you to know that you can always be your most powerful crystal that you can ever own. And I want you to know that when in activating your kundalini energy, it is the crystal that's inside of your head that's really being activated. <laughs> it's the ability of you purging your body so that now your kundalini energy can rise up your own Jacob's Ladder. And then when it gets to the root of your Jacob's Ladder, when it, when it gets to the crown, I'm sorry, of your Jacob's Ladder, <laughs> you'll be able to see God yourself face to face and then you'll be able to live and you better understand that you have this <laughs> this cross on the back of your head your abdullah ablamgada where this fluid this crystals fluid that go up and down your spine is climbing up your jacob's ladder and then it's allowing you to secrete your crystals fluid you know the land flowing with milk and honey all because you chose to write crystals. All because during this journey of your crystal search, you chose the higher frequency crystals because you understood what the biblical text was trying to say. I am from above, you are from below. And you allow your heart, the most powerful form of energy, to heal your below and you ain't get stagnated there. Because see, sometimes in our journey, we, we, we dwell so much on the lower self when all we had to do was just change our mind because once we changed our mind it was so powerful it ignited you to open up your heart and just heal all because love heals all so in your crystal journey what no matter which color you get <laughs> no matter which color crystal you get you make sure you open up your heart you make sure you open up that most powerful form of energy in your heart. You make sure you open up your mind. Because if we talk about opening up the heart, but some people fall off when you say open up your mind. You say, oh, my mind open. No, I'm talking about studying, getting to know yourself with your mind. I'm talking about going down portals and sitting with yourself, feeding yourself some more consciousness. Feeding yourself, understanding yourself, because the love that I'm talking about is stemming from you understanding yourself, God, because love is understanding. So you're going to find in your journey that these two, your heart and your mind or your Christ consciousness, going to lead you to your own kingdom. Going to heal your entire body. Going to change the aura of your frequency around you and around everybody that you come in contact with. So in your choice to get all the colorful crystals, choose wisely is all I'm saying. Choose wisely. Okay. Hey, Big T. How you doing, babe? Beautiful. Hey, good trouble. <laughs> New Mike. You might feel enlightened. Yes. New Mike is powerful. What you know about that, Brian? <laughs> hey, Purpose. Hey, Purpose. New Mike, feel inspired. Yeah. Oh, so y'all know about New Mike. Hey, Tia Tia. I love the master manifester you are. Oh, thank you, Law of Assumption. Hey, Brock. Yeah, Law of Assumption. That's when you assume or you quantum jump. You bring your mind somewhere else and assume it to be true for your right now reality. And being that your subconscious mind don't know if you're experiencing this thing right now or you are imagining this thing, you are drawing that thing closer and to you it'll real it'll like set forth a bridge of incidents for you to experience it so it's not any doing on your part unless you have inspired action to do at that point all you have to do is be and you be by bringing your feelings to that state of being by going in there through your mind just like what children do using your human imagination so you're feeling yourself there by touching it tasting it looking at it hearing it smelling it you create an imaginary scene to be over there just like children you, you tell them who want to play you know tea time barbie superheroes and they get into character mode and they be ready so as adults it seems like it's it's, it's it's a foreign language but adults we too can get into character mode we should get into character mode for anything that we want to use our birthright our superpowers but we get so serious though we be want to do though we make it so hard and children children then figure the thing out and so that's why it says in the biblical text if if you don't come as a child you ain't gonna make it into the kingdom 
If you don't come asking why, why, why? I was talking about that too. For the Lord shoppers, all you got to do is ask why. Because that's what the little, little children do. They ask for why. But why I got to go to school? But why? But why, mommy? But why, daddy? But why? But why? So as an adult, you know, use that child like heart of yours for your Lord chakras. But why? But why am I constantly getting into these type of relationships? But why? Why are these narcs attracted to me? But why? Why am I sending out a signal that I ain't worthy? But why? 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 And when you ask why, it opens up a portal for you to heal your little self with your own why. But when you use your feelings and jump into your human imagination, it sends you to other planes where you really want to be. So the children, the children got it both ways. They know how to act why, ask why, and they know how to tap into the law of assumption. That's why, that's why they, life is easy. That's why one minute they may, they may be crying, but next minute they, they want to play again. They're enjoying their journey. <laughs> yeah, that is so powerful. Hey, love, Brie. Thank you for being here. Yeah, yeah. Hello, everyone. Hey, Ra. Hershua. Is that you saying that right? Yeah, it's Chief. Yeah. So if you have any questions, I can answer some questions. Love your lives. Who is that? Let me see. Hey, T. Yeah, I love my lives, too. <laughs> yeah. I stopped wearing my crystals in about... About a month ago. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Hey, 20 step. Why you feel like you felt like you didn't need them anymore? You felt like you've learned and moved on from them? Just curious. I mean, it's not. Oh, and I want to share this here too. It's not that you we have to have crystals on all the time. We really don't. We really don't. Another thing when I'm talking about clearing energies too, um, don't forget about the um the sage. Sage helps to clear the energy in your home, you know, by lighting it. And the other one, uh, Paula Santo, um, you can burn it. Paul San is it Paul Santo? Pablo Santo. I think I'm pronouncing it wrong. I be messing up words sometimes. I'm sorry. But um, I normally use the sage more anyway. You burn it. You open up your front. For me, I open up my front and back door, burn the sage. Walk around in the house if I'm feeling other energies that I know are not resonating with me. And I'm almost like saying, come on. You ain't no right or wrong way of doing this. All I'm, you do it how you want to do. Just as long as you know that you're doing it right. You know that you're escorting this out of your, your aura, your inner, your field, you know. Your sacred place, which is your home. So it's like I'm saying, come on. Come on. And that's what I do in each room. I just, come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. And I open up the back door with the fire, you know, with the smoke, whatever. And I'm like, away, away, shoo, away, away from me. Now, you serve your purpose. Go. You're free. I'm free. All is well. I release you. And so it's all about your intent, intent with all of you do, what you do. When you have your, your crystals, it's about your intent. Come from a pure place. Come from, you know... A, a, a neutral place, right? Like, right? Like, they have people that come from a place of hate and they manifest that way. I'm just not teaching to manifest based upon hate and killing people and hurting people. Yes, I do dark. I do deal with dark crystals, but everybody that deal with darkness ain't because they're doing evil things, per se. I balance mine out by making sure that it is work around love. But this is another thing, too, that help to heal your body. Frequencies, all things are energy, frequency, um, and vibrations. And so sometimes it's just a sound. These little um, bowls, I love this here. And when I was actually at my lower self, I used to use this all the time. And I would just simply place it in my hand on one of my chakra pools of energy while laying down in the bed. Or I would put my, my rose crystal on my heart and... Uh, I was like, in maybe my blue one on my throat, but definitely I have my purple amethyst on my um, crown, on my third eye, so to speak, like, right? And while I'm laying there, whether this was on my body, on my chest, or in my hand, I will feel the energy...
And this energy is akin to the sound or frequency that you your body gets attuned to when you are experiencing like Kundalini energy. Remember, I talked to you about the nine. So when we have when we hear things like at the 432 hertz of healing energy, the four plus the three plus the two that equals nine. The 144,000, the 1 plus the 4 plus the 4 plus the 0 plus the 0 plus the 0 equals 9. It's a frequency. So this frequency is a heat, the same energetic pulsating frequency where that you are feeling when you're experiencing Kundalini energy, that you're hearing when you're hearing music that, that is at the 432 frequency healing. Because sound brings us back to memory. It brings us back to that childlike state. It brings us back to pure consciousness, pure thought, right? <laughs> and it clears up our chakra pools of energy just by hearing the sound. They have tuning forks. They have the sound bowls, the Tibetan bowls, the sound. This is why sometimes music in our physical reality is played at opposite frequencies from 432 because they're chaotic and they want you to kind of like get addicted to chaotic music versus getting addicted to a harmonious music like this to wake you up or quickening your awakening to your God self state of being. And so for a long time, I would just like on Saturdays when I clean house or whatever, I would just have this here sitting there. And when I walk in that particular room where I was cleaning, I just hit it. And I would be, I would just be smoking my frankincense, you know, not smoking it, but I mean, burning it is what I was trying to say. Burning my frankincense, my little resins of frankincense, like, uh -huh. And allowing my, I'm going to have to burn me some Frank's and I ain't did that in a long time. And allowing the smell, the smell, the sound, the frequency from my crystals. Yeah, all of that together, that increases your frequency, baby. And so when you put a bowl like this here on your body, like if I was laying down and put it close to my heart on my body and hit it while I was, it was on my body. Now my chakra pools of energy is not only feeling that because my subconscious, I mean hearing that because my subconscious mind is open and it's never sleeping, but my body now is feeling feeling that pulsating and it helps you to open up all of those other block chakra pools of energy just by it feeling and vibrating on you kind of like equivalent to the cat you know the cat that have nine lives the cat when it purrs the frequency of the cat purring next to you the feeling of it can heal your body if anybody out there have a cat it can heal your body it knows when you are not in alignment, so it will come and lay on you and it'll begin to purr. And it purrs so fast that the frequency can heal you. This is why we're ancient, the ancient ones, fast the cat. This is why they, they, they had the cat around to ward off negative energies, to heal their body, to protect them. So the cat can be the protector if you're into that kind of thing. The healer can be the protector if you're into that kind of thing. The sage, the frankincense, the, the bowl, but remember that you're the best. <laughs> that you're going to be the most powerful one. That you got the nine, you looking for the nine life in the cat, but you you have the frequency of the nine when you elevate yourself to the Christ conscious frequency, which is 144,000, and you add that together, you already can do the nine. You already have the nine in your hair, the nine ether in your hair. You have the nine in your DNA strains in the back, in your back, your Jacob's ladder. It spirals down as the nine. You are the nine life. So beautiful so peaceful yeah so yeah i just wanted to share that with you all about crystals about the power within you about attuning your frequency 
Sickness and disease can't live in your body when you attune your frequency to these things. We talk about, I talk about rather food all the time. You know, I'm vegan. I do healthy choices. Yeah. But there's so many other ways to heal your body, you know, not just what you put in your body, things that you're listening to, things that you, you're smelling, things that you're looking upon and giving your attention to, you know, there's so many ways for you to be God again. You can't miss it. <laughs> you can't miss it. It's everywhere. You can't miss it. Find that thing that feels good to you. Go down that rabbit hole and explore that thing. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Hey, Tia, Tia. You can't miss it. So for those of you who are just get in here on Saturday, 9 a.m. Arizona time, no, 8 a.m. Arizona time, I'm sorry, 9 a.m. Central time, I'm going to be doing a class, a two-hour class on chakras for all the, all, anybody that is, you know, like maybe a beginner or whatever. I'm teaming up with, um, with a go-getter goddess. And so we're going to be doing this on Google Meets. And so it's going to be a two-hour class on chakras. I'm going to start doing classes and educating. I, this is what I really, really love to do. And I want to see how this goes. So on this particular one, you would cash app me, the 5555. My cash app is in my bio. And we're going to start, like I said, at 9 a.m. Central. After you send the cash app, you'll get the Google Meet link for you to join us. It's going to be three other people on the panel. They're going to be talking about the chakra energies and I'm really going to um, close it out and, and talk about why they are important, how to clear and open them. And we're going to kind of like talk a little bit about Kundalini energy and some other good practices that you can use. So if you're interested in that, we already have a, a bunch of people that signed up. So don't take too long to figure out if you want to be part of the class. Me and she's a TikToker. Her name is Krista Williams. The, the The group is called Go Getter Goddess. It's going to be this Saturday, the 18th, 9 a.m. If you're interested, make sure you cash app. It's 5555. You'll get an email confirmation and you'll get the direct link to come and join the class through Google Meet on this Saturday morning. I'm going to start doing a lot more classes too and uh, maybe maybe late March, early April if you're interested. I want to do my own class without anybody else on Kundalini energy as well. And so maybe every other month or so I'll do a certain class because I really like to get a little bit more personal. So I'm really making sure that I'm helping people individually and it's just not people just passing through. I really enjoy this, you know, I can post it on my YouTube channel. But at the same time, that one-on-one -on -one make it so personal. And I, I just like to know that I'm helping somebody evolve in their journey. So if you're interested, you coming, Big T? All right, Big T. I want to see you there this Saturday at 9 a.m. Central. Hey, Kevin, you coming to the class Saturday? 9 a.m. And so y'all join. This is good information, man. This is something that, you know, your soul lives on. Your soul desires expansion. You know, we sometimes we jump when we had our lower self for like Beyonce concerts and, and, you know, Super Bowl things. Yeah, that's fun to occupy while you're here in physical form. But you really want to focus on getting to know you. That way, each lifetime you're evolving because all of this information is being uploaded to your subconscious mind. And so each lifetime you're evolving, so next lifetime you be done got the Kundalini experience and now you can tap into other realms or even if you don't get to a kundalini awakening in this lifetime at least you'll get to a place of maybe your throat chakra is open maybe your heart is open and you started the journey of getting to know yourself through thought through 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 clairvoyancy through opening a crack into your first eye you know that's what i'm here for i'm here for your soul expansion Nothing else, baby. <laughs> oh, you did it already? Okay, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna send you the information. We're gonna need your uh, email, your email, uh, DM me your email address so I can send you the information and the link for the class on Saturday. And I look forward to, for more of you joining this video. 
was definitely from my heart to yours. If you enter crystals, remember this one thing. Don't forget this most important thing that you are the most powerful crystal that you will ever own. I'm going to come live tomorrow. I don't know my topic. I just do topics based upon what I'm told on that particular day. I don't know what we talk about tomorrow, but I will go live tomorrow. So I'll talk more about the class on tomorrow. Thank you, Big T, and anybody else. Any scholarships available? No scholarships for the class. <laughs> no. You want to join the class, Mika? <laughs> thank you, Big T. Thank you, thank you. T, I want you to be in that class, T. So you're saying I should get a cat? <laughs> You could get a cat. I'm saying you could. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, Mika. I had a cat. I had a cat for nine days, though. I was all into the cat journey. But, and I felt the purr. And I loved the energy. But when that cat jumped, I was in New Orleans when I bought my cat. When that cat jumped on my kitchen counter, though, I hadn't thought about that part. I was like, oh, no, you're going to have to get a body here. When I smelled that cat urine, and it smelled like ammonia in my house. I was like, oh, no, baby. I'm going to have to dap the ancestors up because they really did good by having you around them. You smelling like that there. And you ain't going to be jumping on my counter. I got to make products and stuff, you know. Uh -uh. Nah, I know too much. <laughs> I can't have cat hairs, you know. Nah. So you get a cat, but <laughs> on your own. I didn't tell you to get it. I'm just telling you the benefits of having them. I bought my cat back. I bought one from the animal shelter in Louisiana. They got my mug shot up in that same animal shelter because I can't adopt no more <laughs> since I bought my cat back. Nine days, I couldn't do it, but I got a great experience out of it. Seriously, but I'm just not that type of person that, you know, I do too much for, you know, people. You know, I send out herbs and detoxes and I can't afford having no hairs. No, you know, cats shed too much for me. I can't have that kind of stuff because I, I do business from home. But I love the cats. I, I honor the cats. I think they're beautiful. I, I know they're powerful. But it just wasn't for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Okay. Are you speaking about the fact it clears all energies? Yeah, it clears the energy. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, it clears all energies. Like negative energies is what I'm saying. Energies that you carry around thoughts and things from other people that, that kind of like jumped on you. Yeah, that's what I was speaking of. Let me make sure that I answered everybody up here because I, I'd like to be engaging on my lives. Because, you know, us humans, we don't want to be left out and still. I am God, really. Yes, you are. Yeah. Okay. All right. The crystals can be in the same space as you. Yes, they can. You said it right. Yes. Say spring. Say spring demons. Oh, no, 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 no. If that's what you believe in your subconscious mind, so shall it be for you. But they ain't never brought no demons for me. Matter of fact, when I was in a dark space, when I was in a dark space in my home, I felt a dark space because I was scared from being religious. And no, sage helped me clear that energy. But for you, if in your mind, because see, we all have different minds and I'm not... You know, being ugly with you on he, on this here sunflowers. But if you're going to believe that and you're going to think that thought, it's going to become a new belief in your mind. Because a belief is something that you told yourself over and over and until it became a law in your subconscious mind. So if you say it over and over, sage bring demons, sage bring demons, sage bring demons, then one day then it's going to get embedded in that subconscious mind. And then you're going to believe that. And then you're going to find evidence of that. That's how powerful your mind is. So I am hopeful that you don't put that in your mind. But if you do put that in your mind, you God creating your reality like that there. And go ahead on God. Because on your plane, it bring demons. But on my plane, it bring peace. So, I mean, deal with it the way you want to deal with it. I choose to think better than that. See, we always have two roads diverted. But I, I choose the road always less traveled by. I choose the road that always going to take me back to home. I choose the road that's going to believe that the most powerful form of energy that runs this matrix is the energy of love. I don't believe in that so-called boogeyman. I don't believe in the so-called police and the, and the FDC and the government and all of these people in the days and the white people and the blue eyed bean that's out to get me. Because if I believe in that and I put that law in my mind then I'm going to have a blue eyed bean that's going to be the police officer that's going to give me a hard time. Then the then then for my income tax time, I ain't gonna, I'm going to have to pay and they're going to be garnishing my checks and all that. And then the government going to give me a 
law that I don't like and, and all of this here. See, we create with all of those crazy beliefs. So I choose not to believe that. I choose to be easy with myself. I choose to see both good and bad. And because I send out so much good, <laughs> because I bless so many people and I heal so many people and I've sold them to so many people's lives and I've engaged to so many people for, for their products and they whatever they passioned and things, I gave, I sent this here out so my word can't come back to me void. Abundance is mine, you know? Love is mine. Ease is mine because I, that's what I sent out. And I suggest that you attune yourself to that because if not, you're going to be going through hell and think you're living in hell right here on earth. For some people, they're going to heaven. We choose hell, you know? So anyway, let's see. Mm, love your lies. I read that, I read that, I read that. Okay, I'm just going back up to the top. I just want to make sure that everybody's heard. Hello, everyone. I see you there. Let's see. You know that song. I don't even remember that one. That was way up there. Let's see. Oh, thank you for all the followers. Look at all these followers. Look at all these followers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. They notify my people. Okay, I'm going back to the bottom. I looked at everything. I looked at everything. Greetings. Hey, Demi. You like Demi? <laughs> Let's see. Hey, God is loving life. Hey, Ra, Ra, Ra. God is 11. Okay, big sis. Fact. Where could I find the clearing symbols? The clearing symbols you have. Uh, you talking about the clearing, clear quartz? Clear quartz. I got mine from Earth Odyssey, like I said, in um, in New Orleans, Louisiana. Do they have a website? Let me see. Oh, look, they got a website. Their website is www.earthodysseynola.com. www.earth. O D Y S S E Y N O L A dot com. Their phone number 504 581 1348. I don't know if y'all can see that little bit, bitty right there, but that's them. Earth Odyssey. That's where I got mine from. This Tibetan, I mean, this bowl that I got, I believe I got this here from Amazon. It came with a little pillow. I don't have to hold it in my hand. It comes with a little pillow. You can get this here from Amazon. And so all of my crystals that I have here, they all came from Earth Odyssey. That was my store of choice. Everything but my new mic. My new mic I got from um, Etsy. E-T-S-Y dot com is where I got my new mic from. And this book, if you need a book to write your affirmations, or, you know, your future desires. I got this book from Etsy too. E-T-S-S-Y. I think it was like $40. So, that's it. Oh, and my rock. My rock came from here. From Arizona. Because this is where I wanted to live. <laughs> Alright, my battery getting low. I'm about to get up out of here. This was a great live. And I'm thankful for all of you that will hear all the things that you have pictured. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, they all came from one of those places. Anyway, I'm about to get up out of here. Join me on my live on tomorrow. Um, look at my profile if you want to join a class on this Saturday the 18th at 9 a.m. on Google Meet. It's $55.55. We're going to be talking about chakras. We're going to talk about healing, why they are important, and how to rise to your God self through your Kundalini energy. This video... Was from my heart to yours, baby. Be blessed.